today in this session we are going to discuss about principal security dangers to cloud computing in the prior uh, few sessions we have started with security with cloud and we have already discussed various factors various risks and issues with uh, security when we are working with cloud computing so in continuation with that we are going to discuss today uh, with certain principal security dangers that hampers the security when we are working over clouds so there are uh, various factors various principal security dangers that impact the performance and affect the security overall security over cloud computing so first one we are having is virtualization and multi tenancy second is non standard and vulnerable apis then internal security breaches data corruption or loss and user account and service hijacking so all these factors impact the service models various service models that we are having either we are working with uh, software as a service or platform as a service or infrastructure as a service any service model that we are following they are, they can impact the security over any service model so the principal security dangers to cloud computing include uh, dangers that exist in pre cloud computing cloud computing highlight heightens the risk it actually increases the risk in certain dangers uh, such as uh, Uh, with cloud corruptions data may be corrupted over the cloud and uh, it seems to be unsafe and then while we uh, while introducing some new risk uh, with the upcoming technologies that are virtualization and multi tenancy that we are uh, implementing over cloud computing for uh, resource sharing for platform sharing so due to uh, virtualization and multi tenancy also uh, the security over the cloud computing is actually compromised a lot so uh, let's uh, discuss uh, all in detail one by one so when we are talking about a uh, virtualization and multi tenancy undoubtedly uh, they offer basically over the cloud they offers uh, the advantage of economies of scale we can share n number of resources over the cloud and uh, we can actually isolate the uh, clients or users from uh, one another by using hypervisors or uh, with the concept of multi tenancy and due to which it also decreases or controls the cost that we have to invest for good uh, result for an organization and uh, we can also use the various resources various uh, costly resources uh in more effective and useful manner and we can increase the scale of overall organization and overall productivity is increased so undoubtedly there are so many of advantages of virtualization and multi tenancy that the technologies we are implementing over cloud computing and uh all these actually is possible due to the adaptation of virtualization and multi tenancy architectures that make all this possible over cloud computing however these technologies were not designed to strong isolation in place hypervisors that we are using for uh, 
multi tenancy has extended these days potentially uh, uh, exposing the operating system because we are actually exposing our operating system uh, to the other uh, outside world maybe the clients or the third parties they can have the whole scenario whole, whole access to the mechanisms of operating system so due to this the risk factor definitely increases and also creating an environment where attackers can gain access to operating system level hypervisors and high level services the functionality and data so uh, the impact of attackers or uh, the access of attackers over the operating system has been increased and they got attracted more towards attacking directly the operating systems by hypervisors and they can actually control the whole functioning and mechanisms of the various services or resources over the cloud so uh, this way they are impacting highly so uh, how we can reduce this impact how we can reduce the impact uh, with virtualization and multi tenancy so we can consider uh, let's say uh, we can implement operating system security best practices such as uh, patch management that that can be performed or adopted uh, while uh, it, uh, it it comes to the management of virtualization and multi tenancy scenarios and uh, apart from this we can implement application system security best practice can be a triple a triple a as in we can authentic provide the authentications authorizations and auditing firstly we have to check whether the clients who are accessing the operating system are the genuine ones so we can check their passwords or the other credentials for that and uh, then we we can check for authorizations as in whether they are allowed to have the access whether they are having the access for that particular service or operating system or resources so for that we can have a check for authorizations and then we can audit them we can have track of what services are being used for how long and we can log their uh, uh, actions so for for future tracking as well so this way we can also provide the auditing so it is considered as triple a practice uh, by which we can improve the security even in uh, the scenarios of virtualization and multi tenancies so next we are having the next principle uh, with security compromisation here over the cloud computing is non standard and vulnerable apis so uh, when we are talking about application programming interfaces apis are the software interfaces that cloud provider offers that allows the customers to have the access into their services so they are actually the bridge uh, interface through which uh, the cloud services and the users or clients they actually interact with each other so the cloud apis are not standardized yet we don't have any specific standard that uh, we can have this kind of apis or we can allow this over the internet or not there is no as such uh, standard for using apis especially when we are working with cloud computing so uh, uh, focusing users of multiple cloud providers to maintain multi programming interfaces increases the complexity and security risk as well so since an api uh, 
offers access to internals of a system uh, a weak api exposes consumers to variety of uh, security issues encompasses at a operational exposure of the compromised api functionality so if any of the api is weaker कुछ ए पी आईज हैं जो हमें उतनी एफिशिएंसी नहीं दे पाते हैं कुछ वीकर एंड्स पे होती हैं या जिनमें लूप होल्स होते हैं सो so, उस उन ए पी आईज के सनारियोज में बेसिकली uh, हमें uh, जो थर्ड पर्सन है मे बी इट कैन बी अकर और एनी अन लाइबल पर्सन सो उसको सारी ऑपरेशनल हमारे प्रोसीजर्स जो हैं वो पता चल जाते हैं सो वंस दे गेट द ऑपरेशनल प्रोसीजर्स सब उनको क्राइटेरियाज पता चल जाते हैं या मकानिजम्स पता चल जाते हैं सो दे कैन मिस यूज दैम और दे मे यूज दैम और मॉडिफाई दैम फॉर द बेनिफिट्स सो द ऑपरेशनल एक्सपोजर शुड नॉट बी देयर बट बिकॉज देर इज लैक इन स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन देयर आर वीकर ए पी आईज दैट आर एक्चुअली एग्जीक्यूटिंग एक्चुअली अडेप्टेड ओवर क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग so this way uh, it actually increases the risk it actually increases or hampers the security and uh, the only reason here behind is the non standardizations and the vulnerable apis that we are executing or adopting over cloud so how we can reduce them so when uh, we are planning to reduce the risk of non standard and vulnerable apis uh, we may consider the few things as in we may implement api security by best practices such as requiring aaa again so we can have aaa practice of authentication authorization and auditing then apart from this we can review the cloud provider security model that what kind of mechanisms they are adopting what models they are adopting and uh, we can have a check for that and uh, especially when uh, we can check what kind of uh, cloud security models are being used especially for apis and uh, including any api trusted chain so we can have a check for that and we can review we can modify those mechanisms just to ensure that our api is no longer vulnerable it is no longer weaker entity that is exposing the operational criterias to the third person so we should be ensured for that so this way we can uh, reduce the risk of non standard and vulnerable api next we are having internal security breaches even in our previous session we had a deeper discussion over internal security breaches what are the various factors that are impacting internal security breaches and how we can overcome that uh, in quite deeper criteria we have already had a session for this whole uh internal security breaches and it is actually the principal factor for compromising the security when we are working over cloud computing so uh, the it industry has uh, well documented that over 70% of security violations are internal so this threat is amplified in cloud computing as both it providers and the consumers are under a single management domain so the cloud providers have to manage 
uh, the consumers as well as all the mechanisms or, uh, that are managing and tracking for resource management, for monitoring and billing. So for all these criteria, for the satisfaction of all these technologies, we have to provide a huge management domain under this. So there is also a threat which increases with in, uh, for internal security breaches. Uh, if another uh, customer is breached by the cloud provider, you don't have the uh, have to know the details of the information lost. However, you have a right to know the type of breach and what has been done to stop this type of breach from being repeated. Another uh, customer's breach may offer insight into potential hole in the cloud services. So they may get into the loopholes. They may find out the ways uh, to crack the channels and then they may impact the cloud services. So this way breaching can be done and they, any attacker or third party or any unreliable person may get the access to sensitive information to our crucial data. So this way breaching can be done and it actually hampers our security. So how we can reduce these risks of internal security breaching? So we can consider various key components of uh, contractual agreement, especially between the customers and cloud providers. Uh, we also had a session for uh, legal agreements and contracts that are being done over uh, cloud computing and that should be uh, performed priorly before getting the services. So just to be clear and transparent that what services are being offered and it is a mutual agreement between the clients and uh, the providers, service providers. So it, they both come over uh, common grounds that these are the services being provided at this cost and for this long and also for from uh, customers perspective or customers side so they agree that they will be not cheating the services they will not be affecting the security and it's a mutual agreement or contractual agreement service agreement between both the parties so by adopting these agreements and contracts we can reduce the risk of internal security breaches and transparency in information and internal management practices is being done and it is quite transparent and both the parties are clear about all the policies and terms and conditions, do's and don'ts that we have to follow while we are getting the services from the cloud. And also uh, the one can understand the human resource requirement that what actually one needs and for how long and how they are going to provide all these services. These all been criteria and it is been clear while we, uh, we are having the contractual agreements. So also we can have a clear level of explanation and notification of a breach. If there is any security breach in longer term that has happened, immediately both the parties will be informed. They will be notified just to take the precautionary measures and get alert. So this is one way. And uh, also ensuring the con uh, that contractually uh, uh, you are in the loop if an internal breach occurs with the cloud provider. So uh, with your data or another customer, so if any of the breaching, security breach or internal breach occurs, so cloud provider may ask you if you are going to cheat as a customer, you are misusing the resources or you are uh, providing 
access to the third parties so third parties can use your account and then they will get the sensitive uh, access but you will be in trouble as a customer because the account which has been hijacked was yours so this way they can have uh, the contractual agreements and both the parties agree over same grounds and they take the responsibility that no cheating or no breaching will be done from their level intentionally so by adopting these measures these criteria one can be uh, prohibiting the internal security breaches so uh we'll be continuing this discussion in our next session this is all for uh now and if anyone is having any kind of doubt or may put your points up you may so if anyone is having any kind of doubt may ask the queries here and we are going to continue with the session uh, with same topic in our upcoming session that is at 10:30